Hi, I'm Amanda Gates, Assistant Concertmaster of the Virginia Symphony Orchestra, and I'm here to give you some pointers on orchestral etiquette. I've been a member of the Virginia Symphony for 24 seasons now, and I'm also a member of the Chautauqua Symphony First Violin Section, which is an orchestra in the summers. I've also uh, done sub work for Pittsburgh Symphony and Detroit Symphony, so I've had a lot of it professional experience in, in various positions, being both a permanent member and a sub. I think that one of the things that sometimes isn't taught in music schools and conservatories is what to do and what not to do when you, when you get the job and how to make sure that you get asked to play again with a professional orchestra. Or say you've won a blind audition, congratulations, and then you are showing up for the first day of work. How do you behave in such a way that you uh, make sure that everyone really enjoys playing with you and, um, and wants to keep playing with you for a long time. So here are some pointers to help you navigate uh, that aspect of, of being a complete musician. Before you even get the gig, say a personnel manager uh, asks you to play uh, a week with an orchestra, fantastic. You want to make sure that you re reply promptly and definitively to the personnel manager or whomever is in charge uh, because they are probably anxious to know um, do they do they have that position filled will they need to go down the rest of their list um, so you want to do that and I would say try to respond uh, with no more than 24 hours lag to really help help them out okay but you've done that and you've gotten the gig and you're gonna show up uh, one thing to make sure, this is uh, a funny thing that sometimes we don't think about, but make sure you don't put on a lot of perfume or really heavily scented deodorant or anything like that uh, before you even arrive at the hall. You just want to make sure that there's nothing that's going to be distracting to the people around you. You want to make sure, of course, that you get the music that you're going to be playing. Usually you can write to an orchestra's librarian, email them, and they will let you know the best way to do it. Sometimes they have a link to a Dropbox or they might send you PDFs or something like that. Um, and you want to have prepared your music well. If you're in, in, in the string section, you'll want to identify uh, where you're going to be sitting so that you have an idea of which part in a Divisi section you might be playing. Try and sort that out beforehand, but also know that sometimes ch things change. So you might want to learn all the parts for a Divisi at least you know, get it to an acceptable level just in case when you get there someone's out sick or um, has to leave suddenly um, and you might get moved up or something like that. It's good to have a handle on, on all, of, all of the parts just to make sure that um, you're ready for anything that might happen. Okay, so you're going to the hall. Um, you've found the stage door entrance. Congratulations. It's a good idea, especially as a first-time sub um, or a new player, to arrive well before the rehearsal start time. So if the rehearsal starts at 10, you'll want to get there 9.30, 9.40. You'll want to make sure that you find a place to unpack your case uh, that, that is the right place to do it. And that you, when you unpack, you want to make sure that you don't take up too much space around you. So if everyone is unpacking sort of in a parallel fashion, don't put your case per perpendicularly. All your stuff that you have with you, your your bag, your coat, those sorts of things. Try and put them neatly underneath your case so you're not taking up too much space. Then you'll want to locate your chair and your stand. And um, This varies from orchestra to orchestra, but in the Virginia Symphony we have chairs that can be adjusted individually, which is fantastic, but you need to make sure that you arrive in plenty of time to do that so that, you know, if you're on the shorter side like me, you don't get there and have a chair that's like a foot taller than you need. If there are any issues with your stand, like your stand leaning or something like that, you want to make sure that you can find um, the person to help you with that well before the rehearsal begins so that you're not disturbing anyone else around you. You want to make sure that you can see the conductor and your section leader. And if you're a string player, you have to do this in such a way that you also are respectful of your stand partner. So that means getting there and situated and warmed up soon enough so that when your stand partner arrives, you can work out between the two of you, uh, you know, the stand height, the stand angle. Um, sometimes all it takes is moving a couple inches to the left or the right to make sure that everyone around you can see and make sure that the people behind you 
um, are also comfortable. It's always a good idea to check on that and say, uh, can you see all right? Um, almost everyone says yes to me because I'm pretty short, but <laughs> sometimes, sometimes funny things happen. So it's a good idea to always check on that. Always bring a pencil. Always bring a pencil, obviously, to rehearsal, and you probably learned that in school very early on. Um, so one thing you want to avoid is the, that clangy noise in rehearsal. I got this really cool magnetic thing that goes around my pencil, so it just clips to the stand like that. So always have a pencil. Your stand partner may have one too that they prefer, and that's cool, but you should always have one handy, then you'll be known as a person who always has a pencil. So while warming up, you know, a couple no-nos are playing any big concertos <laughs> in front of everyone. And of course, I hope this wouldn't need to be said, but just in case, don't play the solo that's assigned to the principal of your section. They're going to put their own stamp on it. Nobody wants to hear your version of it. Just play it for yourself in your living room uh, and not everyone else. Now it's 10 o'clock and Personnel manager will get up and make some announcements, be quiet during those announcements, pay attention, and then you'll start to tune. You should always tune quietly, quickly as you can, um, and, and obviously don't play anything except your strings while you're tuning. So, so now the rehearsal's underway. The thing about an orchestra is you have 70, 80 people, and it's really important uh, for a smooth rehearsal that the conductor runs the rehearsal. This means pretty much just no talking. Um, when you start to get a level of chit chat going on within the orchestra, it sometimes gets so that people can't hear vital instructions coming from the podium and you want to avoid that. You know, if somebody says something to you and you, you want to respond or laugh, you know, just that's cool. Just keep it to a minimum. If you have a question during rehearsal, and, and you're a sub or a new person in the orchestra, you might not know that the etiquette is such that you, you would never raise your hand and ask the conductor from the back of the section. That's not something that you do. Um, if you have a question, you go to the person in front of you and ask it quietly, as quietly as possible, and wait patiently for the response. It sometimes has to work its way up to the front of the section and then work its way back down the answer. And also, I would suggest waiting just a moment before you even ask the question, because sometimes what happens, there's an obvious question that needs to be asked, you know, is, is that an accent or are we not accent, something like that. And the, the, uh, the front stands might actually be discussing with the conductor or, or amongst themselves the answer to that question. So give them just a moment to try and sort that out before everyone bombards them. All right, um, hopefully everyone knows this, but uh, fingerings that you're going to write in the part. So you've done all your practice and you want to write your fingerings in the part. So if you're in a string section, I think you'll know this, but just in case, if you're an outside player, you're going to write your fingerings above the music. And if you're sitting on the inside, you'll put your fingerings below the music. Make sure that you don't put too many fingerings in because there's nothing tougher than trying to sort of read through someone else's fingerings. Keep it to a minimum, just the places that you need. Also, be mindful of the librarians who are going to have to go through often and erase everything that's in the part. So that said, also try and avoid um, any unnecessary markings, really, any doodles or stuff like that. Um, it's not necessary to do exactly the same fingerings as your section leader, but you should try and pay attention to what your section leader is doing in terms of which string they're playing on um, and of course which part of the bow. And try and match that without needing to ask every time. In performance you'll want to look engaged. The audience is looking at you um, so you know you don't have to have a, uh, a goofy smile on your face or anything like that but just be mindful of the fact that everyone's paid to see you and at the end when everyone stands up um, you want to have a smile on your face. You don't have, again, it doesn't have to be a goofy grin, but, you know, try and look pleasant. And, and your job at that point is to acknowledge the orchestra. Um, they've made time in their, in their lives to come and watch you play. And um, now is your chance to acknowledge and thank them for coming. So those are a few pointers, which if you're mindful of that, will hopefully get you asked back to play in the orchestra again. Good luck to you and have fun.